Hey, what's going on? Today it's all about macro photography, especially high magnification macro photography. Therefore, we're going to put the 60 millimeter of Lauer to the test. This is a two to one lens and we're going to challenge ourselves or I challenge myself to shoot with the highest magnification possible. This means on an APC camera, the width of an image is only 13 millimeter. This is quite equal to a magnification of three to one. So quite challenging to capture moving objects, for example. And we're not gonna use any tripod or focus stacking, just single frames handheld with a flash, a flash diffuser and this reflector. Let's go. But before we're gonna go out into the forest shooting some insects, we need to talk about the ideal settings to get the best image quality possible with this specific lens. Because we're shooting at a magnification of three to one, the field of depth is actually equal to zero. So we need to close down the aperture a lot. And therefore I have taken an image of all possible apertures this lens actually got between f 2.8 and f22 to show you what is actually happening with the sharpness, with the image quality when you close down the aperture. The results show that the resolution of this lens drops dramatically when you go at f16 or beyond. So the limitation for me using this lens is actually f11. I think the best sharpness is at f8, but at this magnification, I really need that extra feel of depth. That's why I always go with f11 using this lens. There's one thing which I really do not like about the aperturing of the lens. It is super easy to change the aperture. So no force needed at all. So when hand holding the lens like this, I have changed the aperture by accident several times. So this is really something which you should keep in mind when shooting, control the aperture because probably the, the value will change just by hand holding the lens like this. Okay, now it's time to shoot some macro and see how this setup actually is working in the field, in the forest. And here the next problem appears and that is the focusing distance. Using the three to one will lead to a focus distance of about five to seven centimeters. And this means that this diffuser, for example, will touch the object. So with this setup, it is only possible to shoot objects which are between the two phone sides. For example, I could not take an image of this table because the diffuser will touch the table and I'm not able to get close enough to focus. So it is a little challenging using this setup, but of course it is possible to take great images. Therefore, I'm grabbing the leaf or the branch where the insect is sitting on and pulling the branch into focus, taking the image. And this also got the advantage that I can rotate the leaf or the branch to get a nice composition. In the beginning, I started with some easy objects like a snail housing or some flowers because yeah, they just did not move and I thought it must be pretty easy to keep the area I'm interested in in focus, but actually it was not. I even had to delete a lot of images of static objects. So I was kind of frustrated and thought, how in the world should I be able to capture moving insects with this kind of setup? And the answer is try and error. What really helped is really grabbing the leaf or the branch and rotate, move the object in your focus plane and just fire with the flash and hope to get some good images which aren't focus. When you delete 80 or 90% at the end of the day, you will have 10% which probably will blow your mind, especially shooting at this high magnification, revealing some unexpected results like this colorful hairs on the beetle or the compound eye, which just yeah looks pretty cool. And I mean, no one told me that macro photography will be easy. I wanted to reveal something unexpected, something which I cannot see with my eyes. And that's why I do not like shooting at one to one magnification, which is compared to three to one, extremely easy. You will probably keep most of the images just because the field of that will be way larger. But that's yeah kind of boring. I wanted to see really high detail and therefore we have to go at a higher magnification. It will be much more challenging, but the results will be way more satisfying. And that is what I'm looking for. When you know my YouTube channel, you probably know that I used to use the 90 millimeter of Sony, which is actually a one-to-one -one magnification lens, but therefore I add the Raynox DCR250, which then allows me to get a quite similar magnification than 
with the lower 2 to 1 magnification lens. But I have experienced that the images with the lower lens are a little softer, which is actually no big deal, but I have to add a lot of structure in post-production and Lightroom, then remove the noise in Topaz denoise to get a quite similar image quality. Are you interested in a side-by-side -side comparison, a shootout between the 90mm of Sony and the 2 to 1 60mm of Lauer? Let me know in the comments. At the end of the day, I must say that I was quite satisfied with the results. I kept around 100 images, which were in focus where the composition was pretty okay. I just feel that the images are a little soft because I had to use f11 to get that field of depth needed. So the image quality is good, the results are very good, but only when you do some corrections post-production, just adding structure in Lightroom, then removing the noise again in Topaz Denoise. But hey, it's high magnification macro photography, so there are always some limitations and we have somehow to deal with it. And it is a two to one magnification on APC, so why should I use one to one magnification where those problems will not appear? I want the highest magnification possible, the highest detail possible, that's why I use it this way. And now I'm really interested what you think about this lens, about the images. Maybe you have other ideas how to deal with the problems described in this video. I really am looking forward to read your comments. Thanks for watching, have a good day and hopefully see you in the next.